Kim, what's on your radar? Well, the Bilderberg meetings held this past weekend at the Mandarin Oriental in Washington, D.C., convened again for the first time after a two-year pandemic hiatus. About 120 of the West's most powerful people, including heads of NATO, CIA and NSA, prime ministers of nations, big tech executives and vaccine makers, gathered together to discuss the world's problems, mostly focusing on war and foreign policy. You've probably never heard of these meetings. Most people haven't, and that's no surprise. The meetings are conducted in secret without any press. In fact, the organizers are proud of the secrecy. On their website, they state, the meetings are held under the Chatham House rule, which states that participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speakers nor of any other participant may be revealed. Thanks to the private nature of the meeting, the participants take part as individuals rather than in any official capacity and hence are not bound by the conventions of their office or by pre-agreed positions. Oh, sure. So democratically elected policymakers and other government chiefs who work on the taxpayer's dime go and sip cocktails behind closed doors in a luxurious hotel discussing important matters such as war, global alliances, pandemic responses and disinformation with the corporate billionaire class all weekend in secret without the press. But don't worry. They're doing it as private citizens, so it's okay, because what they discuss probably won't affect us, right? They actually completely blocked off the Mandarin Oriental for these meetings. Here's independent journalist Josh Friedman reporting from the location. Now, the Bilderberg meetings actually have their own website where they do give us some insight into what it is they talk about and who attends. This year's meeting covered 14 topics, geopolitical realignments, NATO challenges, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, Shino U.S. tech competition, Russia, continuity of government and the economy, disruption of the global financial system, disinformation, energy security and sustainability, post-pandemic health, fragmentation of democratic societies, trade and deglobalization, and finally, Ukraine. In fact, The Guardian reported that Zelensky himself was rumored to be making an appearance, appearance via Skype. Curious if he was also attending as a private citizen. People on the published list of participants, including wealthy investors and bankers like Peter Thiel from Thiel Capital and executives from Deutsche Bank and Goldman Sachs. The CEO of Pfizer was there, presumably to talk about post-pandemic health. The list includes many from the artificial intelligence space, such as executives from Facebook and DeepMind, as well as the former head of Google, oil and gas executives from Shell and Naftogaz, Ukraine's largest oil and gas company. Many experts on Russia and Ukraine were in attendance, as well as politicians, policymakers and global leaders, such as Senator Kirsten Sinema, NSA Director Jake Sullivan, CIA Director William Burns, the King of the Netherlands, Canada's Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, Finland's Prime Minister Santa Marin, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root, the head of French intelligence, and even Henry Kissinger. This year's meeting was led by the Secretary General of NATO, Jen Stoltenberg. But again, they insist there is nothing of public importance going on at this meeting. It's just private citizens getting together in a blockaded hotel, chit-chatting about global matters like war and pandemics, nothing of consequence that we should be concerned about. So there's no need for any reporting or transcripts. The few reporters who attempted to gain access, reporters such as Max Blumenthal, Josh Friedman, Frank Analysis, Luke Radowski, were denied, and actually the location of the meetings themselves were never announced and remained secret. It was reporter Josh Friedman who was able to figure out where the meetings were even happening. As much as the organizers want to claim all of these powerful people who have the ability to march us into wars, shut down entire nations during a pandemic, and spend endless amount of taxpayer money on things like weapons of mass destruction, are just operating as private citizens, we all know better. These people are not getting together to mingle. Even though nothing official comes from these meetings, no votes, no resolutions or policy statements, there absolutely are ideas being exchanged and decisions being made. The question is, aren't we the people entitled to a reading of the minutes? So what do you think, Olimi and Robbie? Do you think we should be knowing what is going on behind these closed doors, who's in attendance, what they talk about. Shouldn't there be transcripts, reporters in these meetings with these very powerful people? Or is it fine that they're just private citizens getting together, chit-chatting about war? No, it's not fine at all. I think we absolutely are entitled like that many, that many politicians, different countries. There's no way. It's not, it's not chit-chat. It can't be something... Listen, I don't believe in secrecy anywhere but attorney-client privilege, but it comes to our lawmakers and the people who are responsible for us and make these decisions over our lives, especially at a time like this. We should know everything they're discussing, who they're discussing it with, and why. 
Right. How about more privacy for genuine private citizens? We need privacy from these people. These are the yeah, spy masters. Absolutely. These are the right? people. Absolutely. These are the people watching us at all times. Um, you know, how many? Right. We're talking about NATO people. We're talking about uh, former CIA, FBI, law enforcement type people. You know, it's not just. Those aren't private citizens anyway, or maybe they are now. They, right. they, they, they weren't before. They have very public-facing roles, and they are coming up with policies that they want everyone to be forced to adopt. So it's not, right. you know, it's not, it's not going to be, they don't want it to be voluntary. They don't, I'm, I'm sure a lot of these people wanted vaccine mandates. They want, you know, funding of, uh, they want weapons sent various places. They want interventions. They want all kinds of things. So, well, fine, but let's discuss it. Let's know what's being what's being proposed. Let's not have it behind closed doors if that is the case, which I it is. Yeah. yeah. And this 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 meeting has been going on since I, I think 1957 was the first meeting and it's annual. It just skipped a couple of years because of the pandemic. Maybe they still met via Zoom or something. But, you know, they've been doing this for the longest time. And the fact that it isn't being reported on because reporters can't get to it and the fact that that's not even being reported reported on by the mainstream media. I mean, you have prime ministers showing up to this thing. And like you mentioned, spy masters, you have the head of the CIA, the head of French intelligence, which is their which is their uh, their CIA or their MI6. So that it's crazy that all of these people are getting together. Then you have not only just policymakers, but they're mixed in with the billionaire corporate class. So you have the heads of corporations that are absolutely no doubt there trying to encourage these world leaders into policies that are going to line their pocketbooks, of course. So you've got the CEO of Pfizer there saying, hey, uh, we need to buy more. You, need, you guys need to buy more vaccines. You know, it's for it's an it's a national security. You, of course, have uh, guys from the spy. There's a lot of artificial intelligence. This should be very kind of frightening for people. A lot of artificial intelligence people there that were that are looking for ways to spy on us to prevent disinformation. Right. And you've got others. So all of these industries, weapons, people, artificial intelligence, uh, vaccine, all of these different groups there. What are those CEOs there for? What are those board members or chairman right. of the boards? What are they there for? They're there to get money. That's right. what they're there for, to influence policy. So we've been putting up with this for a really long time. There's not a light, a lot of light shed on this. Anybody who then talks about it is called a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> But it's like, look, these guys are not helping with the, they, they say, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory. But if you're going to hold a meeting behind closed doors, you're going to blockade it off. You're not going to let anybody report on it. What else, what, what do you think that is? I mean, that sounds. The way, <laughs> the way I see it is in our current world, like nothing is secret, right? There is no privacy. You know what's happening almost everywhere. So the ability for this many important people to be in a place and we not hear about it because I didn't know about it. I This sounds like an episode of Billions and that in and of itself tells me it's untoward. Right. So the fact that we did, <laughs> the fact that they are right. even able to successfully go to whatever lengths and you know there must be lengths to keep this completely private from us. Yeah. There's, a, there's a reason. There's definitely things being discussed you don't want us to know about, hear about, or even get an indication that there might be happening. So that tells me everything I need to know that we should be privy to it. Because at the end of the day, we elect, uh, we elect government officials. We have these people in power because they're supposed to serve us, right? We put them in the place. We want to know what they're doing. We want to have approval in it. We want to have a say in it. So instead of giving us access to it, we have no knowledge of it. Reporters can't go there, but you have billionaires there. And the billionaires are getting to discuss what you're going to do and what you might do. That is definitely yeah. a problem. Well, and then the, this whole notion that they could separate and suddenly be private citizens, and you've got all these, you know, okay, that's one thing if it's like a birthday party that they're going to for their niece or nephew, but it's right. another thing if it's a bunch of powerful people in these positions of decision making, and then they're just saying, oh, but don't worry about it. They're in operating right meeting. now. Yeah, is, this is just a private, these are just <laughs> private people. They're right. nobody, you know, I mean, <laughs> insane, totally yeah. insane. But, uh, you know, I wish I could tell you more about what happened at these meetings. I don't know. You we watch can't billions. Get it. We don't know. I'm sure we'll know. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come good point. Out Maybe a little less privacy for the people trying to I intricately control and plan our lives, and a little more privacy for everybody else. Yes. How's that sound? Thank you, Kim. We'll have more rising right after this.